If you've been anywhere on the internet over the past 12 months, you'll have come across these. Photo retrospectives of Barack Obama's presidency. Many of the shots featured were taken by Pete Souza, the official White House photographer. But how do you land that job? Like a number of White House positions, the official photographer is an optional one, but most recent presidents have stuck with the tradition. In fact, many have developed close friendships with their photographers. I think at this point, Pete and I are like an old couple. We, we sort of know each other and he's like a member of the family. Once in the job though, the president's schedule is the photographer's schedule. The official photographer follows the president to almost every meeting and engagement, documenting each presidential day for posterity. JFK was the first US president to work with a full-time photographer, Cecil Stoughton, who became crucial to developing the narrative of Kennedy's time in office. Having trained as an army photographer, where he once worked under future president Ronald Reagan, Stoughton was assigned to JFK after his inauguration and took over 8,000 photos of the president during his tenure. He was the only photographer to witness the iconic moment that Lyndon Johnson was sworn in as president after Kennedy's assassination, where he artfully framed Jackie Kennedy's bloodstained skirt out of the shot. Some presidents are more open with their photographers than others. Richard Nixon, for example, was quite restrictive with his official photographer, Ollie Atkins. His most famous shot was this one, taken during a secretive meeting between the president and Elvis. Today, it's the most requested item from the US National Archive, more so than photographs of the moon landing. Meanwhile, Jimmy Carter is the only president in modern times to have not appointed an official photographer. He did offer the job to Stanley Tredick, who had worked on JFK's 1960 campaign. But Tredick turned him down, saying, I didn't feel he wanted an intimate, personal photographer around him. As well as being tasked with documenting history, presidential photographers need to keep up with technological shifts. For example, Reagan's first-term photographer, Michael Evans, made the jump to full-time color shots in 1981, while Eric Draper moved from film to digital while working with George W. Bush. Bob McNeely, once described as a wild boy by no less than Hunter S. Thompson, was Clinton's official photographer. The two would regularly golf together and play cards aboard Air Force One. After Clinton's affair, many of McNeely's images were subpoenaed. Feeling betrayed and shut out by the investigation, he found it difficult to continue and eventually quit in 1998. Interestingly though, one of McNeely's junior photographers would go on to become Hillary Clinton's official photographer and would have been given the top job at the White House had Clinton won in 2016. Pete Souza, Obama's photographer, also worked for President Reagan for a time. It seems that if you're interested in photographing a president, it really helps to know someone who already does. Alternatively, you'll need to work your way up from the campaign trail into the White House alongside the candidate. Pete Souza, for example, first photographed Obama in 2004 for the New York Times and joined his campaign staff in 2007, two full years before his inauguration. A number of photographers have risen alongside President Trump, who has been notoriously picky about how he shot. As of yet, there's been no word about which one will join him in the White House, but Pete Souza has definitively ruled himself out of the running. One thing's for sure, you'll need a stellar portfolio and a proven track record to get anywhere near the job. Each presidential photographer has had a unique relationship with their subject, differing levels of access and an individual eye for photography, but proven skill is the one thing that ties them all together.